what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today I'd like to do the full review on the B3 Winter Blade Factor. For those of you that saw my unboxing video, I covered quite a bit of the important points in that video. But what I'd like to do is get a little bit more in-depth and specific on this one. Because there are going to be a lot of people that already own one of the original factors or one of the B2s. And they're wondering, is it really worth buying into this new batch that's going to be launching on May 24th? For me, honestly, I'm going to tell you 100%, absolutely it is, because there are some significant changes that change the ergonomics of this knife and allow it to be, I think, a much more useful tool. I think the only negative feedback I really saw from anyone on the earlier versions were the fact that it's very slim, very blocky, very rectangular, and they felt that it didn't have the ergonomics to be actually used as a good EDC tool to do a lot of cutting because it fit a little bit awkwardly in the hand. Now, I've never argued that point, but the thing is, I've got a lot of different size and shape knives that I have worked around and made it work for me, so I always did the same thing for my factors. And if you go back to my original review, one of the things that I said was, this reminds me more of a utility knife and not so much a standard EDC folder. So a lot of people saw that and went, well, it doesn't really sound like it's going to be my bag. So they missed out on one of the most special knives that's come along in almost a generation because this is the world's first magnetic knife. Now, I know I've beaten that to death in a lot of different videos, so I'm not going to belabor that point. If you want to know what makes this knife stand out mechanically from every other knife ever made in the world, go back and check my original review on the very first factor. But what I'm going to focus on a little bit more heavily here is the comparisons between the newest version, the older versions, and what the upgrades or the, the modifications are that may interest you. For me, the biggest thing is going to be the ergonomics. It's going to also be the titanium on the backside instead of carbon fiber. It has a little bit more heftiness in the hand. It feels a little bit more substantial without actually making it heavy or cumbersome in any way. It's still got that same amazing action. It's still got that same great ping sound to it. And uh, another thing I think a lot of people are going to like is the fact that you've got this stonewashed finish, which means it's going to hide normal everyday wear marks from cutting a little bit better than the original satin blade did. The satin blades looked really good, but I think for people that look at this price point of knife as somewhat of an investment, a lot of times they're a little bit worried about actually using their knives because they don't want to mar them up, scratch them up, deface them in some way because they feel like it's going to take away from the value or maybe even just the pride of ownership of owning a knife in that price range. So with the brand new stone wash finish, this is going to be a lot more like a Chris Reeve or it's going to be more like a hinderer where you're not really going to be afraid to cut and use the knife because you've got a finish that will mask most everyday use. Now, as I mentioned, on uh, May 24th, these are going to be opening up for pre-order. And I know that doesn't make a lot of people happy to hear the word pre-order, but it's the way of the new world. It, it allows smaller businesses to offer more variety and more for what people want to get. If it was just everybody that designed a really great knife decided they were going to start making knives and order their knives from whatever OEM, if they went out and said, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and prepay for this whole thing. I'm going to order the variations that I think people are going to like. They could be stuck with variations that never sell because that variation wasn't as popular as all the rest. Or they're just taking a chance 100% with the entire order going, oh, gee, I hope people like my design. And then they buy all these knives. Let's say they, they, they satisfy an MOQ of 500 pieces they get 500 knives in their friggin' living room 
and they're just hoping that they're all going to sell. Now, you could be talking a $30,000, $60,000 investment. That's a big risk for a lot of small businesses. So the smartest way for them to do it in a lot of cases is going to be on pre-order. It allows the customers to dictate what actually gets ordered. Let's say you decide you're going to go out on a limb with this crazy-ass purple, and then you make a black one, and then you make a satin version. Those are the three choices that you think are going to be the best. And all of a sudden, nobody orders the satin. Everybody orders purple. Everybody orders black. And you're like, huh, I would have wasted a shit ton of money ordering one that people wouldn't have actually ended up buying. And it will also let you know which ones are the most popular so that you have enough in stock. That was a mistake that I made with my recent release with the Kaladin. Uh, I didn't realize that as many people would like the Silver Twill option as much as I do. I made that basically to satisfy my own needs. And that was the first one to sell out. And that's the one I still get emails about and messages about. People really, really, really want that one. Now, if I had done that on pre-order... I could have had two or 300 people that ordered that specific variation. So that's how many I would have made. So you live and you learn. Anyway, so May 24th is when he's going to open up for pre-order. You want to get in on the very first day, especially if you love the combination that I'm going to be showing you, the purple with the Timascus clip, because I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to be the first one that sells out. So if you're not there on the uh, actual pre-order day, you're probably never going to see one. With that, let's get down to the tabletop and we'll talk about the comparisons. The uh, We're going to compare and contrast between the older variations and the new variation, the new batch, which is what the B is for, and uh, see what you guys think of it. By the way, also thank all of you for signing up to become members of my YouTube channel. I have opened up memberships. There's a little button down here somewhere that says click to become a member or just become a member, something like that. I made an announcement video last week kind of detailing what I'm going to be doing with that and why I'm replacing Patreon with this because Patreon was tying my hands and not allowing me to do the things that I really wanted to do. And I don't think I'm going to have that same problem with YouTube. So I'm going to start working on some exclusive content that's just for members and also doing, hopefully, some live streams here very, very soon. Anyway, thank you guys, as always, for watching. Let's get to the tabletop portion of the review and have some fun. Humanity has always feared that which is different. Well, I'm here to tell you, to tell the world, you're right to fear us. We are the future. We are the ones who will inherit this earth. And anyone who stands in our way will suffer the same fate as these men you see before you. Today was meant to be a display of your power. Instead, I give you a glimpse of the devastation my race can unleash upon yours. Let this be a warning to the world. And to my mutant brothers and sisters out there, I say this. No more hiding. No more suffering. You have lived in the shadows in shame and fear for too long. Come out. Join me. Fight together in a brotherhood of our kind. A new tomorrow that starts today. Okay, let's get this party started. Here we are with the new Factor B3, the B2, and the original, along with the Mirage which is quite a bit different than the concept of the factors because these are assisted openers, but it's the world's first magnetic assisted opener. So if you guys haven't seen this video yet, I highly suggest you go back and check it out because this is a pretty damn fun knife. But to be honest with you, they're not as fun as the factor. The Factor just has something about it that is completely addictive. Whether it's the sound of it opening, the feeling of it opening, the feeling of disengaging that magnetic lock and letting the blade swing freely down back to the closed position. There are a lot of reasons 
to love the factor. Now, the biggest thing for me about the new one and what makes it so special for me is the fact that there's the option for a full titanium backside. I do believe that he will still be offering some that have the carbon fiber backsides, but I'm not entirely certain. All I know is the one in my hand is absolutely phenomenal. I am so glad to have this sitting here. And yes, I am one of the people that really likes the flipper bar that's on the back. For those that don't want that flipper bar, that are never going to inch the knife forward in their hands and activate it by that, and you're just going to reverse flick it, he is offering the option of having that carbon fiber backspacer built into the knife where it completely blocks this area and makes it a seamless transition from one side to the other, all the way up to the lock. And for people that think, okay, this gap right here is going to be problematic for me as I'm holding the knife and I'm gripping it hard and I'm using it, then you're going to want to get that carbon fiber backspacer option. For me, I like having the option of being able to flip it like this because it's unique, it's different, it's unlike any other knife that I've ever had in my collection. And it adds to that fidget factor again as well. See if we can get the sound to pick up on the microphone. Yep, it's still got that wonderful tuning fork ting to it. Now, the other major change for this model, and what you may want to consider if you've already got one of the older factors and you're thinking, well, do I really need to spend another $400 to get another factor? I think that the ergonomics displayed here are going to be absolutely worth your while. Because I know as I've been holding this knife, I've been playing with it, I've been flipping it, I really appreciate the new contoured frame. It's something that's entirely new and entirely different for the Factor series. And I really enjoy the milling work that's been done on here because it is ribbed for your pleasure. It feels really good in the hand. You feel like you have a more solid grip on it, more solid purchase. I think the only thing that annoys me and may annoy others is the fact that unlike the previous models, and there, there was a little bit of that with these, but right now that polymer or Delrin blade aligner pin that's in there, let's see if we can get a nice focus on it, that little white disc, that actually rubs up against the blade quite a lot, and it's going to leave a soft mark on it, and you'll see it the more I play with it. You can see it's starting to come back there. Now, it's not a big deal. It rubs right off, and you don't even know it was there. But for those that are super anal about everything, that may be something that irks you just a little bit, but it, it keeps the blade aligned on the previous versions on the B2, looks like it only had one. On the original, there was one on each side of the blade. And that helps keep the blade centered with the magnets uh, pushing and pulling against it. That's pretty important. See, the original had two. And from what I remember, those did touch this blade in the same fashion but I don't really see any marks on it anymore from that. So it may be one of those things that'll kind of, uh, as it wears in, as it breaks in, it may not be, be an issue going forward. Now, along with the new ergonomics, the other big deal about the new frame is the fact that it feels a little more substantial in the hand if you've got the titanium backside. Normally we would call this the lock side. I guess I could call it the clip side because that's the side the clip is on. 
but they are ambidextrous. So if you're a lefty, your clip is actually going to be over here. So I'll keep calling it the backside. The original pivot had the single slot. Uh, I am a big fan of slots. Slots are my favorite. The slottier, the better, I always say. So the B2 and B3 have the multi-slot pivot. Which, yes, you could still adjust your pivot from that. You just use a very wide, large, uh, standard flat blade screwdriver, and you can get in there. I don't think I would suggest using a coin on this version, because now instead of carbon fiber, you've got titanium, and if you've got a quarter in there or a nickel, it's probably going to be wide enough to scrape up the anodized finish on the titanium, and that's not cool, man. You don't want to do that shit. All right. So let's stop distracting everybody here. Let's get the other ones out of here. And uh, in the packaging, you'll get a sticker, but you'll also get a magnet. Yeah, how cool is that? It's still got that same great frictionless action when, when the uh, in between the closed position and the open position. So when you go to flick it, it is super fast, super smooth. And yes, you'll sit there and do this all day long. You'll flip this thing a thousand times a day when you first get it. That's for damn sure. One of the big concerns I had before I had gotten the original in my hand last year was I was under the assumption that you could do something at some point where this flipper bar could move out of the way and you would go to engage it and you would accidentally push on the heel of the blade. It absolutely does not happen. It's never happened to me. This is a very flush fit design. Plus there are magnets holding that in place. So it, it takes a little bit of, it has a little bit of resistance, excuse me. So it's not just going to flop open and be like, ah, oh, and then you cut yourself. It's not really ever going to happen. I've never once come close to that happening on either of mine. I think Brian is an absolute genius. The guy comes up with shit that just, I don't know if nobody ever thinks of or nobody can engineer or they can't actually execute it, but he comes up with shit that is amazing. If I remember during the editing process, I will slip in a little video somewhere in here of an out the front that he's working on right now, which is actually an electronic out the front, which is nutty. It's friggin' crazy as shit. I don't like the idea that I would have to keep my knife on a charger or constantly recharge it, but there's no other way to make this cool thing function except for to do it as a battery-powered option. It's crazy. It's like a little mini lightsaber in your hand. It is wild as shit. Very, very cool. He is developing, by the way, um, his first non-magnetic knives. So there will be standard folders coming out shortly, probably in the next year or two. But keep in mind, everything he does is complex, so it takes a while. It's not like he can just design something and then prototype it and then have them immediately available. They're difficult. Now, Brian did begin by custom making these knives and uh, not using Best Tech as an OEM. The, the Best Tech knives are the ones that we all know and love, and they're also a hell of a lot more affordable. Now, if you want to spend $1,000 uh, on a rad-ass bitchin' knife, uh, I'm pretty sure that he'll still make one from time to time. I don't think that he's you got like open books where you can just message him and go, hey, Brian, I want a custom factor. Please build me one. I don't know that that's an option. Uh, but I am fairly certain that from time to time, just for shits and giggles, he'll probably make some. But that's how he began. And they were a little bit rougher. I wouldn't say rougher, but they, they weren't as refined as the production versions. But I could imagine that there was a lot of back and forth and a lot of teaching that he had to offer to Best Tech so they could engineer this properly and make these all function as flawlessly as they do. 
The benefit to somebody being a knife maker is the fact that they can build a complete knife and then send that to the OEM so they can replicate the work that's been done. They could take all the measurements and everything that they need off of a live sample instead of just sending over hand sketches or digital renderings or things of that nature. It gives them something to work with that's, you know, physically in front of them. I'm sure that makes it a hell of a lot easier. But over time, these have developed and evolved in the nicest ways. They really, really have. And I love the fact that he didn't give up on, hey, I'm just going to make the, the wildest, coolest, craziest concept with a magnetic flipper and then just stop there. He put a lot of thought into design for the entire knife. And he did little details like the pivot rings. Seeing pivot collars on knives is relatively new in the past 10 years or so. And a lot of the makers that do that generally offer standard pivots. And then at some point through the evolution of their model, they upgraded into making pivot collars as an option in, in their builds. And Brian came out of the gate with the pivot collars. Nicely textured pivots, by the way. So the front side of the pivots are in G10, with everything else being in titanium. So it's got, uh, again, it has a unique look to it, just in the pivot area. Same thing for his lock. Another thing that I really like about the lock that Unless you've handled one of these, you don't know. It is not in any way like a like an axis lock. I won't own knives with an axis lock because generally you have this sliding switch, which by the way, you can see the magnet back there. When you flip the knife open, the, the switch is actually drawn and held in place to the other magnet. One of the reasons I don't like axis locks is because there is the switch on both sides. And while that's great for those that want the knife to be ambidextrous, the problem with that is if I'm holding the knife in a manner, let's say like I'm doing a reverse flick like this, my hand is going to be right up against the lock on the other side of the knife. And in order for a an axis lock to disengage and allow the blade to swing out, the lock on an axis lock is always in contact with the tang of the blade. That's not so the case here. It does make contact, but it's not, it's not really adding any friction to it. So if you've got an axis lock knife, and I have none in my collection, I'm sorry, I can't, just, I can't demonstrate that for you because I, I just don't like them. If I've got my finger here as I'm flicking, it's going to prevent the lock on this side from moving back and forth like it needs to to ride over the contours of the tang of the blade. With these, you don't have that concern because you only have the switch on one side and you're not interfering with the action. I could even hold that back. And it works just fine. Now, obviously, the lock won't engage until I let go of it and the magnets take over. So, as you see right there, it's locked. But if I'm holding it the whole time, it's not locked. And that's the other thing, too. I can disengage that lock and the blade goes back to a fully seated position just with gravity. Once the blade gets to a certain point right about there, the magnets pull it in, and that's what gives you the feeling of a detent. I know a lot of people that talk about the factor, talk about the strength of the detent. There is no detent in this knife. There is no detent ball. It's the feeling, the replication of a detent by using the magnets and this lock. So those are some of the things that make the factor unique and some of the reasons why I truly, truly love it. But getting back to the fact that you've got titanium on the backside, it's a little bit heftier, so it feels a little bit more substantial. You've got that contouring on both sides. You've got the milling, 
or the ribbing on both sides, and it feels really, really, really friggin' good. As I keep sitting here talking about weight, I should probably just go ahead and weigh the damn thing so you can see what the differences are. So let's take the original, lay that down. That's 3.3 ounces. And this is 3.8. Now again, that's not a significant difference. And it's certainly not going to be cumbersome in any way as you're carrying it. But you're going to feel it a little bit. You're going to notice the difference if you have another factor to compare it to. You're going to go, wow, that does feel a little bit more like any of the other knives that I carry. A little bit more substantial. Still super lightweight, very easy to carry. This is a great summertime carry. If you're wearing lightweight shorts where a heavier knife might weigh them down or be flopping around inside of the pocket, this is going to be one of those knives that you can just pop in there, no worries, and it's not going to, you're not going to feel it. You're not really going to notice that it's there. Another benefit is the fact that it's so slim that it doesn't take up much room in the pocket. Now, it is tall when it's folded, so more like a Spyderco Para 3, it's going to have... It's going to be small and slim, but it's going to be rather tall from the, uh, the spine of the blade to the, to the, uh, the spine of the, uh, the handle when it's in the closed position. So it definitely, it'll definitely fill up your hand. But look how compact that is. It still disappears in my hand completely. You can't even tell that I have a knife in my hand. So if you like smaller, more compact knives, the factor is going to be an amazing choice for you. But if you want something that's Completely unique. The Factor is a must-own. This is a revolutionary knife, uh, and Brian pioneered something here that I don't know that we're going to see replicated often, but he definitely blazed an entirely new trail here by making a magnetic knife. The only actual downside to the Factors are if you work the type of job where maybe you're in a machine shop or you're a knife maker or or anything where there's going to be uh, metal shavings around. Uh, obviously, you're not dumping metal shavings into your pocket, so it's not probably that much of a concern. But if you were using the knife in the shop and you laid it down, it would attract all the metal shavings into the action of the knife because there's magnets. So yeah, it's not going to be the perfect EDC for everybody. But then again, how many people out there are working in a machine shop? Most of the people that are going to be buying these probably work in an office setting or work from home or something like that. Maybe you work in retail, something where you're not really ever going to come in contact with metal shavings. Oh, one more thing that's worth noting. Keep in mind, you've got magnets in this knife. So don't go laying it on top of your laptop. Um, I don't know what magnets do to smartphones. I don't know if there's anything that could be damaged there like it would with a, with a hard drive on a computer. But, you know, keep in mind, the knife has friggin' magnets. That's why you bought it. That was the, the selling factor for this knife. It was, hey, it's a magnetic knife. So don't forget that it has magnets. So don't leave it laying around somewhere where magnets would be a bad thing. Let's take a... Oh, see, that spot popped right back up. That wasn't where I was going with this, but... And then it just simply wipes away because it's just a little rub. Remember, that's, that's not made of metal, so it's not scratching anything. Let's get a good look at the stonewash finish on here. Significantly different than, let me not use a dirty knife. Durr. Significantly different than the soft satin that we saw on all of the previous models. There will be a Damascus variation available. And again, I have to correct myself from my unboxing video because I have not handled the Damascus version. I've not seen it in person. In the pictures uh, that I had seen, it looked like it may have been Damasteel. So that's what I said in that unboxing video. It is not going to be a Damasteel option. It's more of a generic Damascus that's being offered overseas which I wasn't even aware of. Now I've got to kind of go back and look at some of these knives that have been available through Chinese OEMs that their advertising actually says Damasteel. 
Now I've got to wonder, were they really damaged steel or was it just a forged stainless Damascus? Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to remember that damaged steel is a trade name. It is a trademark name. It is the name of the company in Sweden. They're named Damascus Steel. And they named their Damascus product Damascus Steel. So it is important to understand the differences between Damascus Steel and somebody else's Damascus. All right, let's back this back up. All right. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on this knife. I think it is friggin' fantastic. I did break away from my standard formula of, of having the TLDW and then the specs and then my personal thoughts. I apologize. But this is the kind of knife that I tend to ramble when it's in my hands because I get very easily distracted by how friggin' cool it is. And realize I've had this in my possession now for about a week and the fascination still hasn't worn off. I've had my original for, I don't know, a year and a half, and I've had uh, the B2 for about six months, maybe a little bit less, and the fascination still hasn't worn off for me. And as you know, I've had thousands and thousands of knives run through my hands, and this is still one that absolutely captivates me. It's fun, it's addictive, it's practical and useful as well. And that's the great thing. It's not like it's a gimmick. Anybody could probably process a gimmick and make a gimmicky knife. And it may look cool and it may feel cool, but it may have no practical purpose. The Factor is a practical, usable knife. Very, very, very thin, flat ground blade that slices through things like butter. Compact and easy to carry. It's one of those knives that you will find a use for it all the time. Probably daily. If you're the kind of person that would typically use a knife daily, you're absolutely going to love this. But so yeah, I get very distracted by it. I'm still not bored by them at all. And I often reach for my factors when uh, I go out for the day and I want to carry something lightweight, compact, comfortable. The only thing that perplexes me about this particular variation or this knife is the fact that now we have titanium on both sides instead of having titanium and carbon fiber, yet there's still carbon fiber. There is a carbon fiber liner that appears to be inset as an inlay into the backside titanium full length. I don't know why that is. I don't know why it's there. I don't know what its, its practical purpose is, but it's friggin' cool. And maybe it was easier to drill the holes and mount the magnets and the blade stop and everything into carbon fiber than it would have been to do into titanium. Perhaps that's the reason. I really don't know, and for some reason, I have forgotten to ask Brian about that. I know that I had kind of just noticed it at the last second during the unboxing, and I talked about it for a minute. So you'd think I would have been smart enough to send Brian a message and go, hey, so what's up with the carbon fiber liner? I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. So my apologies for not bringing you 100% of the story like I try to always do. Because I am a jackass. Love, love, love the action on these things. Man, that purple is hot. I'm fairly certain this is going to be the one that sells out first on the pre-order. Again, remember the pre-order is on May 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central at winterbladeco.com. So if you're looking at it, at the possibility of getting one of these, uh, again, as I mentioned rather long-windedly in the intro, it is a pre-order. These are not going to be a live drop. You jump in and say, hey, this is what I want. And you have that opportunity. I do believe, 
I, I really have no way to verify this, but I do believe that there will also be the option to still have a carbon fiber backside if that's what you want. And that's great. They look great. They're, but there really is something about the full titanium version that while I've had my other ones now for quite a while and I truly, truly love them, I think, and I don't know if it's the fact that this is just brand new in the house that I'm so in love with it or if it really made so much of a difference that I love it that much more. But I know on the days that I've gone out and carried a knife and I looked at all three of these sitting in the case, I have grabbed the purple one, the B3, every single time. There really is something about it that is different, that is special, that does feel... It's, 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 it's existence is justified, maybe is the best way to put that. Because a lot of people are going to go, well, I already bought an original and then I bought the B2. Do I really need a third one? Yeah, it is easily justified when it's in your hand. You're going to go, wow, that really is significantly different without being a, a dramatic, complete redesign. It's still the same basic knife. It just feels a little bit different. The texture in it, the contouring, the very small amount of heft that's added to it, it does make it significantly different. And for me, yes, it, there's a justifiable reason for adding another one into your collection if you already have one. If this is going to be your first one, you are going to be crazy spoiled. You have no idea what to expect. It's great to have a knife that has a utilitarian purpose and it cuts well and it does all the things you want it to do. But then when you add a fun factor on top of it, I don't think I've really ever bought a knife just solely based on fun factor. It's almost like buying a car just because you like the color it was painted in. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a nice addition, but it's not the reason to buy it, right? This having the fun factor added on top of the utilitarian function, the EDC capabilities, is what makes the factor one of my all-time favorite designs that I've ever owned at any price range at any point in my life. I love these things. And you will drive people batshit crazy because you're just going to be sitting there flicking it open, dropping it closed. And listening to that mechanical sound and the ting at the end when it locks up. Kind of bringing out your inner child. All right. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I am a, as I mentioned before, I am a Factor fanboy. I am a Winter Blade fanboy. So take that into consideration when you hear how much I adore the knife. There's a reason for it. All the knives are so spectacularly designed and executed. Best Tech has done such a phenomenal job with these things that it's... It's insane that you're able to get it for the price that you're able to. I could easily see these as a production knife being over $600. Like, like not, even, not even a question. The fact that they pushed, excuse me, I don't know why my voice just broke there, like I just went through puberty a second time. Um, the fact that they were able to push the price down as low as they did is another thing that amazes me about this knife. So for many people, this will still be an affordable option. For, but again, for many people, it's still going to be fairly expensive. So you want to make sure that you're buying, you're investing in something that's quality. Absolute quality. Absolutely. And as you saw with my B2, um, uh, I do cut with these. I do use these. They're not safe queens. As a matter of fact, when I moved halfway across the country six months ago, I used the hell out of my Mirage. It was perfect for cutting zip ties and, and uh, cutting into boxes and cutting down boxes for, uh, what do they call that? Recycling. The, the word escaped me for some reason. So I can definitely tell you from experience that the knives do perform 
They're not just another pretty face, and they're certainly not gimmicky. All right, maybe, maybe the Mirage is a tad gimmicky. I've never been one that's been a fan of assisted openers, but I do like this. I like the, uh, the fact that it's done on magnets and not on springs, which would probably make it legal pretty much everywhere because a lot of places you can't have an assisted opener because of the spring inside. And they still, even though it's not an automatic knife, they still call it an automatic knife. But, uh, you know, having the, uh, the magnets, I think, makes it a real winner. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the uh, Winter Blade Factor B3. If you have a factor of your own, sound off down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to see what your thoughts are on the knives. And if you're ordering a B3, let me know what combination you're going with. Uh, I don't think we're going to know all the combinations until May 24th, but I'm interested to see what people are choosing. And again, thank you to my new uh, channel members. If you would like to become a member of the channel and get the little benefits that the membership is going to give you, please do sign up. There is a, uh, a join button on the uh, screen in front of you. And uh, I set the two lowest price tiers that they would let me set, $5 and $10. Or no, they weren't the two lowest, but they were two of the lowest, I should say. And um, thank you guys, as always, for supporting the channel, for being there, for being subscribed, for watching the videos for liking, for sharing, all that kind of stuff. And yes, liking, putting a simple like on a video changes YouTube's algorithm and makes sure more people see it. And it does absolutely help me get the views. It helps get the word out about the stuff that I'm talking about. And uh, I do greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video.